Thank you all for joining us. And I pray that the words of the Kutata will not just be words, but that God will um, put them in your heart and that you will see them all this week and that you will know that his peace is with you. <laughs> Isaiah 9, 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Over 2,500 years ago, the prophet Isaiah, through the Holy Spirit, wrote about the coming of our Lord Jesus. His prophecy foretold that Jesus would be called the Prince of Peace.
chapter 1, verses 26 through 33. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. What must it have been like to be told you were going to give birth to the one who created you? But Mary trusted the God she worshipped, and although she would have many questions, and the road she had to walk through in life would be difficult, God was there to give her his peace.
can wait until the end. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. Yes, thank you. The world is full of hatred and evil, and every day it just seems to get worse. So many have banished God from their lives, and in that void, evil finds a home, and peace flees. Yet God is still here, waiting for us to open our hearts to His invitation to wholeness, to once again be joined together with Him. The peace we seek is not the world's peace, but the peace that only God Himself can give. In John 14, 27, Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. Not as the world gives do I give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid.
2 Thessalonians 3.16. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always in every way. The Lord be with you all. Noel, the word Noel means shout of joy. God's peace brings joy. Just as the shepherds who heard the good news went and told others, so our peace and joy is meant to be shared with those around us.
and wrote Lamentations during a difficult time in the history of Israel. The country was being invaded. The enemy seemed victorious. Yet Jeremiah wrote these words of comfort to God's chosen people. Through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore I hope in Him. When things look bleak and life around us is falling apart, there's always hope in the midst of the storm because God is our portion and our hope is in Him. Isaiah 53, 15. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. 
We were created to fellowship with God and to worship Him. He came to earth to give us peace. The peace that He suffered to give us so we could have the wholeness of life. That connection that was lost when sin entered in. Claim the peace Jesus offers. Worship the majesty and glory of His name. about and 
You're all looking at me right now like, how long is this sermon going to be? <laughs> Don't you look at your watch. i got to hear there's a post-it note on my Bible. I think that means hurry up. Oh. <laughs> it actually came know. from the candle. <laughs> I just want to read a few scriptures to you this morning. We turn to Luke chapter 2. The theme of the day is peace, of course. And this will be a, a very short message, but I think you've heard the message in song. And in the Advent candle that we've been doing, talking about peace, we'll be in Luke chapter 1. And I believe we will start in verse 76. Sissy, this will come to Bible. Don't forget your Bible, Sissy. Might need that sword. It's great having kids in church, isn't it? They add a dimension you just cannot have otherwise. They're innocents. So yes, we will be in Luke 1, 76. Now this comes from the, from the prophecy of Zacharias. Uh, that's the father of John the Baptist. We will study him next week and what went on with him. Uh, he, he had other, other plans for what Jesus is, or what John's name was going to be, and, and God made it where he couldn't talk for a while until the, he named John the Baptist John. But upon having his mouth finally opened by God, his... Again, a song comes forth, right? And that, that's been the theme of, of December and will continue to be. My message uh, series is Songs of Christmas. And as you can see, we're, we're talking about our hymns and where they came from. And we're talking about the Advent candle. We have the cantata. And we have people in the scripture just bursting into song spontaneously when they would encounter the Lord Jesus. And, and in this one, there, there's a couple of things that go right with this theme of peace. And it's just what we all want, isn't it? Amen. I mean, peace is something everybody on planet Earth is after. And, and I, I don't mean political peace or peace from warfare or, and things of that nature. We know there will always be wars on, on planet Earth, long as people are here. <laughs> but we're talking about the peace that is within. And I've had one of those weeks with, a, you know, some misfortunate things happen to me. I had trouble earlier this week tapping into God's peace. Sometimes your emotions can get out ahead of you and be a, be a blockade for you. And you're looking for the peace of God and trying to claw your way to it, but something's in the way, something interferes. And, but, but the Lord is able to bring us peace as the choir so astutely sang to you in the midst of the storm, right? That is where we most often encounter the peace of Jesus is in a circumstance where anybody who looked at it would say, well, you shouldn't have peace, but somehow you do. Where'd you get it? Well, it comes from Jesus. So let's read in verse 76. Again, Zacharias here is, is prophesying and singing out this song upon the uh, birth there of John the Baptist. It says, and you, child, verse 76, will be called the prophet of the highest, for you will go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, with which the day spring from on high has visited us, to give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death, to guide our feet, look at this, into the way of peace. Into the way of peace. And, and I entitled what I'm doing here, the, the path of peace, the way of peace, because this spells out for you, if you're missing your peace today, this passage tells you precisely where peace may be found. Peace comes from, verse 77, the knowledge of salvation and the remission of sins. Amen. You cannot begin to have peace within you until you know the salvation of Jesus and have had the remission of your sins. Until those sins of yours have been forgiven by the Lord, we call that being saved. That is the beginning of peace. Now, there may be moments in your life where you're sitting on a beach somewhere and you feel happy for a little bit. But peace can be with you even when you're not on the beach. You know, maybe, maybe you're in trouble. Things are going wrong. Everything's crashing down around you. And that supernatural peace comes in there. That comes from being a saved person. 
Amen, church? Amen. That comes from being a Christian. And, and, and you have to be able to come to the cross and say, Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. I'm, I'm coming for the forgiveness of my sins. I want to give my life to you. I remember the day that I, I gave my heart to Christ, that peace fell upon me. I, I, everybody was stealing that blanket last night, John. Did you notice? I did notice that. That blanket, and then blanket number two got stole a bunch. I, that too. I mean, everybody wanted to be wrapped up in a blanket, right? And that's how I felt when I got saved. I said, I feel like the Lord has just surrounded me. I'm, I'm in this cozy sort of, and, and, and it, hey, you, we have all kinds of problems as Christians, don't we? Becoming a Christian isn't the end of your problems. It may be the beginning of some new ones because the devil won't like it that you got saved. But if you want peace, this is where you get it, in the knowledge of salvation. And, and there's a neat title, uh, a name of Jesus in here that I think is just profound. He's called the Day Spring here. Amen. And that, that's a Christian greeting card company, you know, you get, you get things with, from Day Spring. But that's one of the names of Jesus, Day Spring. I had to look that one up. And, and that is an old timey term meaning the dawn. The day springs up. You know what I mean? When you watch the sunrise, it springs up. He is the day spring. Jesus is the dawn. <laughs> I read that and I thought, how neat. Because boy, aren't we in a dark world. Very, very dark world. And, and look down at verse 79. He wants to give light to those who sit in darkness in the shadow of death. I ask you, church, where are we? We're in a world where we're sitting in darkness in the shadow of death. Darkness and the shadow of death are all around us. I've been under the shadow of death this week. Death visited our house. I mean, I, I, we lost our, our family dog. I know to some people that's, that's just a dog, but we took it seriously and it hurt us. And when you sit in darkness and the shadow of death is all around, it's the day spring you're looking for. The darkness doesn't last because Jesus comes springing up Beautiful day spring. And, and isn't the dawn, it never gets old, does it? Watching sunrise. It never gets old. And I think that's because it's an emblem of Jesus. And, and in his day, of course, the world was in darkness. And then here he came. But now what, what he wants to do is he wants to be the day spring in your heart. You got, you got darkness in here until you're saved, until you're a Christian. And then up comes the day spring, and there's light in you where there didn't used to be any, and that's where our peace comes from. Because you can feel it, you can know it, it's real, you know in your knower, <laughs> as I've heard many pastors say over time. Once you have accepted Jesus, that's, that's settled in your heart. You'll have new light, you'll have the day spring, dawn will come to you, and the tender mercy of our God. Look what he'll do. He'll give you light, but then he will guide our feet into the way of peace. I, I, want, I want to make that our prayer this morning. You know, Lord, guide my feet into the way of peace. I've been hanging out on these cliffs for a while, and I don't like it. I want to get on the path of peace where I can see clearly where I'm going, and I'm walking with you. Friend, if you've never stepped onto the path, you're going to have an opportunity in just a minute. And everybody in this church who has accepted the Lord Jesus is, is, is praying for you and rooting for you to make that decision because we know what you're going to get. You know, looking at it from the other side, we know what this light feels like. We know what this peace feels like. We know what it is to have the day spring come up in your heart. But if you don't know it, that's what your greatest gift is going to be this Christmas is if you receive Jesus right here in this church today. And that's the whole message. I mean, what the choir told you and what the verses say right here spell out the whole picture, don't they? You know, the old saying is, no Jesus, no peace. No Jesus, K-N-O-W. That's when you'll know peace. Amen. Let's close with a song, Brother Larry. Now see, the next time I promise you a quick sermon, you better believe me. <laughs> Y'all were skeptical. 
See, the gospel doesn't have to be long-winded to get right to your heart, does it? I mean, we, we, the Word of God is the Word of God, and it is sharp. Have thine own way, Lord. I, I hope you're bold enough to make that your prayer this morning as you sing it. You know, we all agreed as a choir before we sang. We said, well, we're, mi we're missing some people, but we're, we're going to sing to God. And, and I hope that's what you'll do here in just a minute. So find Hymn 544, and we're about to be closed. But I want to give anybody who's never met the Lord Jesus a chance to respond to what you've heard today, and we must respond. So let's go to the Lord in prayer right now as we hold on to that Hymn 544. Father, this has been a beautiful morning in your house. These songs, Lord, and the lighting of the candles and, and all that we have heard and felt of you today, Lord, just reminds us that there is peace available. Sometimes we're just not very good at getting it. Father, I pray you'll just pour out your peace on your people this morning. And I pray that in, in every heart, those who are in the shadow of death, those who are in darkness, those who are hurting and struggling right now, Christmas isn't easy for a lot of folks. Lord, I pray that you would just wash over us with the peace that only you can give. And Father, I want to pray for anyone who's here who's never known the peace of knowing Jesus. And, and right now their heart is, is shaking and, and they're wondering, is this real? Am I really hearing from God? Is God really calling me today? And the answer is yes. He is. But the devil's in your other ear, and he's trying to tell you, nah, hang on, don't go up there. What will people say? What will people think? What's it going to look like if you go up there? He's trying to keep you from getting to the peace that Jesus died to give you. Throw aside that voice. Shut it off. Be gone, devil, in Jesus' name. And now hear the voice within you that says, come to me. That is the voice of the Lord Jesus. So if you're here and you've never, never met the Master, in just a few moments we'll sing our final hymn. Your pastor will be here at the front, and I'm going to invite you to make your way down the aisle. Let us pray together, and you can receive the Lord Jesus today. Peace will come to you like you've never known. That sweet peace you've been seeking is found in the Lord Jesus. Father, do your work as only you can do. No preacher, no choir, no body can do anything like your spirit can do. So Holy Spirit, have thine own way in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together, brothers and sisters. 544, let him have his way in you today. That's the path to peace. If you need to receive the Lord Jesus, you come in Jesus' name. Let us sing. Maybe see.